Hey, we're here for the Fablemans, and this is Nancy Spielberg. How are you doing, Nancy? I'm wonderful, thank you. Uh, just to say, I uh, just want to say hello to you. Nice meeting you, and, and we're here. And this film is, well, based on your family, right? Yeah, it is. It's very, very moving. I think not just for us, but it will be universally, I think, a very moving film and a fun film. So I hope you enjoy it. We will. Thank <laughs> okay. you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Um, several people have said to me, aren't you afraid to have the world see your family's dirty laundry? <laughs> and I even had somebody text me and asked me for permission to go see the film. And I thought, we're all family here. You know, we are all, I, I'm not afraid. I think because I'm so proud of my family. And what you will see is this is a story about a family that I may think is so unique to me, but you will probably find is so universal because every family is complicated and every family has its soiled laundry or the cracks in it. Um, for me, this film, and when my brother during COVID, he called me, he's not a telephone guy, we're texters, we're huggers, we're, he's not a telephone guy. He called me, I was in the grocery store, masked up, gloved up, and because he called me, I said, who died? because I really didn't expect that. And he said, I want to do this film, and I need your bracha. And he literally asked the three sisters how we felt about it, and talking about our parents, talking about our lives, and we were all on board, and it's such a wonderful experience. I don't want to tell you anymore, because I really want you to feel it, see it, and then we can talk afterwards, because nobody really wants to hear me right now anyway. <laughs> so enjoy it. Um, welcome to my family. I feel like Miami, and Igor has made me part of the Miami family, so thank you. Thank you. Brother, at one point I said something out, blah, 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 your film, and you said our film. And so, although I don't have any proceeds from the film, <laughs> um, I am... I, I earned so much in the emotion and really the sharing. And yes, we had a monkey. And yes, his mother married Uncle Benny, who's really Bernie. And they lived happily ever after. And the real wonderful piece of this story is probably after my stepfather Bernie passed away, my mother and my dad and my stepmother became very close. And when my stepmother passed away, my mother and father really profess their love to each other and they lived happily ever after. Oh, really, I, I said, I wish they had said to me when I was nine years old and, and laying on the kitchen floor hysterical sobbing and when they announced the divorce, they had just said like 40 years later we're gonna be holding hands and saying I love you to each other. It wouldn't have been so bad. <laughs> Um, anyway, I don't know if anybody has questions. Uh, I, I'd like to just ask a few before we open up to the audience. Um, at what point did Stephen reach out to you and say, I have a story to tell? And, and at what point did you get involved? And how involved were you and your sisters? So when he called me in the grocery store during COVID and said, this is what I want to do, how do you feel? Um, he then sent the script to me. And he sent the script to my sisters, one of the first drafts. And I, you know, there was not a question, there was absolutely no reservation on, of any of us, of the three sisters, that we wanted this story told. Because we always felt that our parents had a unique love story, and a lot of people have families that, you know, the dissolution of family, and the heartbreak, and some of us never get over our parents' divorce, and it affects how we go into relationships. So I really love the fact that um, this can be told, and this is a person you everybody knows who my brother is. You guys know so, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <What's his name? laughs> yeah. So then, um, and the wonderful thing is, you know, my dad died two, two years ago at 103. Oh, my mom wow. five years ago at 97. And when your parents are gone, I think siblings hear that that is the right, that's the end of the family, because your parents are your rocks. And instead, as siblings, I think we grew so much closer. Because instead of being able to call a parent and say, can you tell us you know, something about a memory, we built each other's memory. We filled in all the gaps. So um, the three sisters definitely have, although my brother knowing every piece of wardrobe that my mother wore. So, 
So when you see her in her Peter Pan collars, or her overalls, or her lance flannel nightgown, um, it, you know, everything was 100% our building her, uh, her wardrobe. We, we designed the food, we designed the sets. They built the interiors of our childhood home. I mean, how many people can go home? Down to the wallpaper. So there was so much that went into it. And some of it's almost a little bit of, of a private wing because a lot of the music that my mother is playing is the music that my mother, mother played. The paintings on the walls in the houses are the ones my mother painted that we grew up with. And the balalaika is my father's and the samovar was my grandmother's. So it, it's sprinkled with authenticity, but it's still its own unique story and its own voice. At, at the world premiere, which we had the privilege of attending, we, we were lucky to get tickets to the screening. Um, <laughs> Stephen said something that really stuck out, which is, in, in acknowledging you in attendance, he said that this film brought you all closer together than ever before. How does, how does it feel seeing your story on the screen and having that experience coming together as a family? Um, first of all, it's sort of cool that he did that because, you know, since my brother got famous, I'm constantly riddled with questions like, well, are you close? How long? How often do you talk to him? And I keep thinking, how often do you talk to your adult brother or sister? <laughs> Leave me alone. So it was sort of like a public display of affection, which was sort of cool. Um, but forget that. The important thing is that, yes, he felt closer to us. We felt closer to each other, all of us together, and have been since. And it's, it's really wonderful. So we have this constant family chat of, Oh, I got a visit from mom, or I got, you know, I had a dream about this. So we, he brought my parents back. He brought my parents back to life. And the only difficult part of that, and this is my seventh time seeing the film, is that I'm enjoying it, I'm living it, and then the lights go on, and the screen is blank. And I'm, you know, I'm bereft again. So I'm, but it's still, and I said this to somebody, wouldn't we all give anything to have one more opportunity to talk to the ones we love? So it's worth it. It's really worth it, except my eyelashes keep falling off. <laughs> <laughs> and I have snotty tissues in my pocket. <laughs> I, I want to open it up to the audience. Do we have questions? Go ahead. So we were, we were sitting in the television before, and you went out, and I knew, because I also have a very different kind of a life story. I was born in Siberia. And I, I, I knew right away you going out and maybe you forgot to go to the bathroom, but I knew that it was too much. Yeah. So my question is, I mean, you know the story, you lived it, it's your life, but seeing it with people and watching you watching it, I mean, it must be like, I don't know, what kind of feeling are you feeling? Standing naked. <laughs> but I have to say, it's based on, and um, when I say that, and they say semi-autobiographical, so, you know, I, I can stand here and defend, my mother wasn't that nuts, but, and the monkey was cuter than that, um, but uh, the pain was so real that you see. So I do have, there are scenes that I have a very tough time with. And I'm trying to get over them, but this is time number seven, and the tears are just as hot and just as many. So, I, and I'm wondering if other people also have reactions like that. And thank you, by the way, for coming out to the hallway to hug me. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to be uh, filled with the daisies, as you already should know. We're going to be reading a lot about the young gentleman, I assume he's a teenager, that played uh, Sammy. Can you tell us a little bit about him before? The, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of articles in your future about him. Right. Well, um, Gabriel, he's actually Canadian. He's a sweetheart. And we, we sisters were each on the set at different times and we tried not to be together. And we, re we really wanted like private experiences of watching them film. But I found that Gabriel and the little girls, the actors, um, were hungry to hear from us. Tell us what it was really like. Because they were trying to get into character. And um, I played that fat little baby and then the cute little girl, so I hardly had a line in it. So nobody really asked me much of anything, but uh, it was really very fulfilling. And I think Gabriel was perfect, as was Michelle. Michelle Williams really worked hard 
and, and Paul, well, first of all, everybody actually was great, so I can't even say one over the other. But um, I, he's gonna be, he's gonna go far. He really is, he was wonderful. We were talking earlier, um, and you were sharing a lovely a anecdote from, from your life experience uh, growing up with Stephen and some of the shenanigans you showed up to. Um, was there a particular story that you wish was uh, featured in the film that you were hopeful that you would have included? Would you like to share? There's so many. Maybe there should be a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, were, there was definitely more torture of the younger sisters than you saw. Oh, I know what I told you. We, so we grew up in Arizona and we had orange trees, front and backyard, full of orange trees. So one of our Sunday afternoon activities was that Steve would gather all the oranges that fell off the trees, so they were rotten. He'd go up to the roof and he'd make a pile of oranges and he would make us run in between the trees and he, we would be moving targets and he would throw rotten oranges at us, which really hurt because it was like citrus stinging on, you know, bare legs. But um, I think he created a lot of the phobias that I still suffer with. <laughs> Dentists, trees outside of windows, when it, like poltergeist scene, yeah, that was like that. So, but no, he's really a nice guy. <laughs> Did he share with you that when he wrote it, what it was like for him to actually? I know I don't know, I don't know the other guy if he had much think, um, he coordinated with them, collaborated with them, but what it was like when he actually wrote the screenplay? Did he share anything about that with you? Right. He he wrote the screenplay with Tony Kushner, and he did say it was very cathartic. It was very therapeutic. And then um, what we also were doing when we were in this family chat he would ask a question to refresh a memory and we would all start to fill in the, the details. So it's, um, it's very cathartic, as it is for me, you know, in the process of, of watching it and pulling out, you know, the, the pieces that, that really hit home. I also like um, Little Sam, the little kid. I, I bet oh, if he got so a lot of his eyes, because his eyes, when he was like watching stuff, his eyes like, yeah, he got cast because of his eyes, among other yeah. things, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, that's sort of that, that's the Spielberg look, you know, he cast those cute little kids yeah. with great eyes. <laughs> There was nothing that felt uncomfortable. No, I, there are things that felt uncomfortable because I was, I'm seeing something that I experienced as a child, but I'm now, so I'm having that reaction, but I'm now 60 something, and I'm mature, supposedly, and I'm viewing this through adult eyes and understanding that there are heartbreaks and there are you know, pains and families that have these problems. So there was nothing that I said don't put in there, but I some still have, you know, that a lot of it's painful, but, but that's good. Because, you know, none of us really came here to watch a family movie. We, you know, we don't want to watch people's family movies. We avoid that at all costs. Um, we, we, we're going to have one more question. Right. So, would you deal with the only Jewish family and did Stephen face so much anti-Semitism? Growing up in Arizona, we did face a lot of anti-Semitism also. I'm not going to mention names because they'd probably sue us but some of the neighbors um, were horrible to us. I mean, I knew I was Jewish mainly because they called us dirty Jews. Spielberg's a dirty Jews. But he did get beat up in Saratoga High when we lived in Northern California. But the girl thing, I think he was younger. I don't think it was a high school thing, but she was great. <laughs> By the way, my, there's a couple favorite lines that I have in the movie. You stupid anti-Semitic asshole. That's one of my favorite lines. <laughs> <laughs> Movies are dreams that you never forget. Okay, that should have been the line I said instead. <laughs> <laughs> Reacting to today's time. Uh, this is a magical moment you shared with us. I, I want you guys to know just how much Nancy went out of her way to make tonight possible. And we so happy.